Hi everyone, we warmly welcome you to the how to series of Corio. In today's video, we will learn how to deploy a React application on Corio. Corio is an internal developer platform as a service which will help you build, deploy, test, run, and monitor your application, helping to get into production faster. So, today we will deploy a React application which is a sample reading list uh, application which will have a React front end and a Node.js backend. This application will allow users to sign in and view their reading lists, add books to a reading list, delete books from the reading list, and sign out of the application effortlessly. Let's see how we can do this. To get started, uh, just go to our website, which is choreo.dev, and sign up or sign in with the preferred method. I have already signed in to Choreo, and this is how the view looks like. To get started, we are going to create a project and inside this project, we will create our front-end web app and our back-end Node.js service. So let's click on create project and provide a project name. You can provide a project description if needed and click on create. Once your project is successfully created, you will see the various options to create components. So Corio supports services, web applications, API proxies, and more. So we will first deploy or create our backend service. For that option, let's click on service. What we will do in the video today is first create and deploy our service component. Then we will create and deploy our web application component. And we will also create a connection between the front end and the back end so that they can communicate. And we will also use uh, the Corio Managed Authentication feature to secure our front end web app. To get started with our back end service component, let's click on service. Let's provide a service name. You can provide a description if needed. Next, I'm going to authorize with GitHub so that I can connect my repository. I'm going to select my organization here and select the specific repository. It's called Corio Sample Book List App and it will select my main branch. My backend service is written in Node.js, so I'm going to go and select the Node.js build pack. Let's click on edit to select the project directory where my code resides. So my backend service code resides in this folder. I'm going to select that and click on continue. My language is going to be 18 language version and click on create. My backend service component has been successfully created. Let me click on that and navigate to the component. This is what the overview of my component looks like. There are going to be some various details related to your component shown in this page. So the next step is to build my component. Let's navigate to the build tab. So there are two options here. You can either build from latest or you can show the commits and build from a specific commit. I'm going to build from build my latest code so that it takes my latest commit. The build process has initiated. What happens here is it uh, builds the code, creates an image and pushes it to an image repository so that we can use that image uh, when we are deploying the component. So this step will take a few minutes. As you can see, my build has successfully completed. Now the next step is to deploy a backend service. Let's go into the deploy tab. So by default, Corio supports two environments, which is development and production. Let's click on configure and deploy to deploy it into the development environment. You can provide any environment variables uh, or any environment configurations that you have. Since my service doesn't need any, I'm just going to click on next. If you have any configurations that you need to provide through a file mount, you can provide it at this point. The next step shows us the endpoint details. You can review the endpoint details and click on deploy. The service will now be deployed into my development environment. The service has been successfully deployed into the development environment. You can see the deployment status as active. The next step is that we are going to go and test the service and see whether it's working as expected. Let's navigate into the test tab and then console. I'm going to first try to insert a new book and then I will go and list all the books. You can also test out the other services as well. Let's first test the post request. I'm going to expand this resource and click on try it out. Let me provide this as my request body. These are the details that I'm going to provide and click on execute. As you can see, we have got a successful response body with our details. Let's test the get all books resources so that we can see that our book has been added. Let's expand that and click on try it out and then execute. 
as you can see the book that we added is already available now that our service is working as expected in the development environment we can go back to the deploy tab and promote it to the production environment here you have two options where you can define new configuration values that's generally the case when you promote it to a production environment especially if you have a database you might have to give new production related configurations or you have the options of using the development configurations if your production configurations are the same as your development environment i'm going to click on next since i don't have any configurations i'm going to go and click on next for the next two options and finally click on promote this will promote my uh, service into the production environment in a few seconds my service was deployed into the production environment you can see the deployment status as active if you want to test your service and see whether it's working as expected in the production environment you can go back to the test uh, tab and then console but make sure you select production from the drop down and you can go ahead and test the service now that we have successfully deployed our backend service and tested it, let's move on to the next step, which is deploying our front-end React web app. You can go to the component drop-down and click on create new. Since we are going to create a web application component, let's select web application and let's provide a component name. I'm going to authorize with GitHub in order to connect my repository. Let me select my organization and the repository name it will select my main branch since my front-end web app is a react web app i'm going to select the react build pack i'm going to select the project directory by clicking on edit and i'm going to select this folder and click on continue i will provide my build command and also provide my build path this depends on your react application and i will provide my node version and click on create now that our front-end component is successfully created we need to have a method to communicate with the backend Corio has this feature called a connection so a connection allows you to integrate a service that you want to deploy on Corio with other service that may be already on Corio or any external resource as well for that purpose let's click on dependencies and connections and let's create a connection to our backend click on create and this is the backend service that we deployed. Let's click on that and provide a name to create a connection. I'm going to call it reading this connection. Provide a description if required and click on create. This creates a connection and we need to copy this configuration in order to provide it as a configuration for our front end web app. There are some steps that you need to follow in order to support this uh, so you need to do a few co code changes into your front end web app the documentation here is very detailed and will guide you through the steps that you need to add or change in your code the next step is now to go and build uh, our front end component so if there are any required changes that we need to do to support the uh, connections uh, part in our code we need to do those changes and push maybe another commit and then you can go ahead and build your latest commit so our code has been successfully built the next step is to deploy our code let's go to the deploy tab and let's click on configure and deploy in the previous step once we created a connection we copied a con uh, the api url and the configuration we needed to provide it from the connections page let's paste that in case you uh, miss to copy that you can go to dependencies connections and select the connection and copy that url again let's click on next in the next step you can see uh, this managed authentication feature which is a capability provided by Corio. For managed authentication uh, it actually uh, simplifies adding authentication and authorization to your single page web application. You can use Corio's managed authentication to easily uh, integrate authentication into your web application or if you don't want to use Corio's managed authentication you can always disable this toggle and skip this step. Uh, so the first step that we need to do is make sure that managed authentication is enabled. You can put provide the post login path, post logout path and any error path. Since managed authentication is already integrated into my app, I'm just going to give a post login path, post logout path, error path and let me click on create to create a user who can log in into the web application. It creates a demo user with a password so make sure you copy the password and you can now go ahead and deploy. Our web application is getting deployed into our development environment. Once it is successfully deployed in the development environment, you can see the deployment status as active. 
the web app url is available here you can go ahead and click on the web app url which will open uh, the application the deployed application i'm going to click on login and provide my uh, demo user's username and password and click on sign in this is what my application looks like uh, this is the entry that I already have added when I was testing my back-end service. I can go ahead and add uh, a new title and I can go ahead and save it. So I added a list to the reading list. If I require, I can also go ahead and delete. So now that our web application is working successfully in our development environment, we can go ahead and promote it. You can use the same development configurations or new configurations. I'm going to use the same development configurations that I had and click on next. You can create a new user for your production environment. Let me copy the password and click on promote. My application will be now deployed into my production environment. My application is successfully deployed in the production environment. You can also click on the web app URL here, which takes you to your production uh, app that is deployed. You can click on login and test your application and see whether it's working in the production environment. You can add any new books and click on save. The application is working as expected in the production environment as well. You successfully deployed a React application with a Node.js backend on Corio in just a few minutes. And we also use Corio's managed authentication feature uh, to secure our web app and integrate authentication into our web app. And we also use connections to create a connection between the front end and back end. In a future video, we will teach you what code changes you need to make in detail in order to support managed authentication into your web application. This was a very simple app that we deployed on Corio with both a front end and a back end. And a uh, and a connection that connected the two. Hope you found this video useful. Subscribe to the WSO2 YouTube channel and stay tuned for more Choreo videos.